guys. Um, welcome to another um, exciting testimony. I'm here with my friend Julie, and actually her daughter um, Serena is uh, was my patient, and so we are gonna just share her story casually today. And um, she's just had um, amazing results. Um, she was diagnosed for potential. Was she di officially diagnosed in the beginning, or um, not officially? But officially, but yeah. So this, um, told that her daughter probably had autism spectrum disorder, and um, so they were led down the path of seeking that diagnosis and everything that that entails. So we're just going to tell her story today. So um, before we begin, I just want to say when I share these testimonies that um, I'm I'm not anti-vax and um, some. Uh, lunatic activist. I just want to share <laughs> real stories of real people um, who have been given their hope back and I can't be quiet anymore about what we're seeing with the current uh, vaccine schedule. Um, it, not everybody has an adverse reaction but way too many kids do and statistically now 1 in 25 kids um, has autism and that's a very scary statistic that didn't used to exist. So. Um, I just want to share hope through testimonies instead of just through random doctoral education because I feel like that is um, that's more real life. So thank you for joining me today. Of course. Um, and I'm gonna do let Julie do a lot of the talking since it's her and her family's story. <laughs> so um, uh, anyway, so why don't you tell me? Why don't you start by telling us your background? She's got a really cool story. Um, you just share. <laughs> sure. Um, I actually did my graduate work at UCLA in um, public health mm -hmm. and with an emphasis on community health science. And ironically, my master's thesis was uh, focused on vaccines as a major preventative way um, to promote health. And, you know, it wasn't until I had my own child and started to have my own children, I have three small kids, that... Um, from seeing kind of these symptoms come out in our daughter, you know, all these autistic signs, and, you know, noticing that it kind of correlated with her intense vaccine schedule. We, around two years old is when we saw her regress a lot in her language development, kind of her overall functioning, emotional health, and um, it's been quite a journey. She's mm -hmm. almost five now, so a lot's happened and a lot's changed. Um, in that span of time. Yeah. So it's really opened our eyes as a mom, as a person with a public health background. Sure. It's really kind of rocked my world a little bit and kind of... Um, it's, know, probably, it's changed the course of your whole life, really. It yeah. has. Yes. Yeah. So it's going been a from, good change, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I know, I mean, I know what that is like when, you know, just graduating chiropractic school or even when I got saved, there was just a lot of things I was taught in school or a lot of things that I was taught in um, in different parts of my education or just in life that when I do, I'm, I'm a truth seeker. That's what I consider myself to be, just somebody that seeks truth in all things, whether I was used to be right or wrong. It doesn't matter. I just want to know the truth, right? And um, being sick for so long and nobody being able to help me I have a similar story, even though it wasn't the autism wasn't part of my history. Um, finding out the truth and what really worked and what preventative medicine really was, and that it's not really about the diagnosis and the naming of symptoms, but we have to ask the questions of why is this happening and what caused this and what can I do about it because there are answers and there is hope. And as you can now attest, right, it's not that difficult. It's not that it's not as complicated as we make it out to be. Right. And it's, it's within reach. Absolutely. Yeah. And I remember you I remember you saying when we were talking before we started recording today, um, how that you remember watching an autism healing video thinking, Oh, that's awesome, but that's their story, that's not my story. And here that we was are your video. Oh, yeah. Oh, of Bryce. <laughs> yes. yes. Okay. So <laughs> of Kareem's then, the last one that we did. And so um just knowing that it's only been a few months, not years, but a few months, and now this is your story, right? It's, it's really a miracle. I can't believe it. I mean, that's everyone's hope, is that <laughs> right. you see something like that, you know, a story of healing, sure. and you, you want to know more. And that was exactly why um, we were drawn to your office and your practice. A family friend of mine had seen this video, I think, on YouTube, 
about this success story treating the adult um, child with autism yeah. through your natural treatment plan. And at that point, I mean, just as a mom, I think you want to attack every issue from any tool possible with, sure. you know, any, any information, any way that you can help your own children you want to. And I didn't know very much about it, you know, but it was a starting point. And yeah. I think what really drew me in was the hope behind it because yeah. I was not getting hope from many places. Yeah. And that's, we hear that a lot, uh, no matter what somebody's been diagnosed with and no matter what age is the, one of the greatest things you can give people is hope. And so what I've learned is sharing real life testimonies so that people aren't just hearing these claims that I'm making or that other doctors are making, but just, mm-hmm. it's your story. So I want you to just share openly about what it's really been like for you. Um, and I don't want to put words in your mouth. Okay. So let's tell her, <laughs> let's tell Serena's story today. Um, so that's Julie's background. And, um, so Serena came in as a result of this video. That was, so that's what led you here. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then, and she was four years old. She's just about to turn five now. Uh, Yes. This coming new year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so here we are at the end of, um, 2017, um, telling your story only three and a half months into this process, not even four months in Mm -hmm. because we started, um, about August 15th. And so, um, I have I actually pulled the file, which she gave me, she gave me permission to do, um, of Serena's history. So I just wanted to share a little bit of that, um, so that we can, you, you guys can have like the exact, just how everything went down. So, um, obviously she came in with, um, concerns. Um, Serena was about to be diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. Um, she was hypersensitive to everything. So that meaning she had a lot of um, environmental allergies, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, she was sick all the time. She got sick super easy, so a very compromised immune system. Mm-hmm. And um, she got colds and fevers a lot. Um, behavior, why don't you share some of the behavioral things that you saw? And then just the other thing to point, is, point out is that she was fully vaccinated exactly on schedule. And yeah. then when did you start to see changes in her health history, her behavior, all that kind of stuff. Sure. So um, as I mentioned before, you know, we have the three kids that are very close in age, um, four, three, and 17 months. And what was sort of difficult was um, every time I kind of had a concern about, you know, possible autistic signs or symptoms, and I make an appointment, bring her in, the doctor kind of always used this excuse, like, you know, regression is very normal when you have a new baby in the house, and you guys have and having a lot of babies in a short amount of time, we've also had, you know, external life factors like moving a lot sure. and just kind of these different big family life changes. So, um, you know, whatever the reason, we weren't really pointed down the road to let's get her checked out for autism. And so, so you know what you're saying is you were seeing all these regression signs. You're the mom. You know her better than anybody. Right. But like I hear this story all the time from parents. Basically, you were your concerns were dismissed and written off as this is normal. Right. But it's, it's just, other it'll things. pass. And, you know, to be specific, signs like, um, you know, all of a sudden her language started to regress. You know, she was not able to say these simple sentences and words that she normally knew. I mean, I knew that she had a great vocabulary, but yeah. there was this sort of disconnect suddenly, like around, you know, two years old. I know that there's a lot of vaccines that happen around then. And, you know, we had them all yeah. done for her. And, um, you know, immediately around that time, we noticed really intense tantrums. And I'm talking about the kind that you feel like you're in an insane asylum. Yeah. I mean, just like you're going to lose your mind <laughs> all day long. And no matter how you discipline, you know, I, I try to discipline, um, you know, in a non-harsh way. But unfortunately, when you have a child that has these kinds of things they're dealing with, yeah, it's literally sometimes unmanageable because yeah. whether you discipline or not, you can't really get through to the child. And let alone staying home full time with two other young children. I mean, it's a madhouse. Yeah. And instinctually, I mean, I didn't know anything about autism in the beginning, but I knew as a mother, I think I said these words to my husband, there's something neurologically wrong in her mind. Like she's not able to process things that are, should be processed by a child her age. Yeah. And that's when we started to really bug the doctor. You know, there's something going on. What's going on? Yeah. 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 Yeah, and then just noticing that she's sick all the time and not getting well. I mean, yeah. Her, her nap schedule know. was disrupted. You know, she all of a sudden dropped her nap, but would clearly still need it. You know, we couldn't 
it was really difficult to like calm her system down. She just had no self-regulation, whether it came to her emotional, you know, kind of the way that she was um, handling different situations. We would tire her out, you know, play and do all these physical things, and she still wouldn't be able to sleep well. So she was like up at odd hours. She, the, her, like hyper yeah, her system was just shot like something was going on and we couldn't figure it out and when how old you said um i think we talked about this it was about at two years old or um you think following the mmr vaccine that things really took a turn for the worse that's kind of the timing yeah. that i remember yeah around two okay mm-hmm. and then um what point i know that she did really couldn't didn't make eye contact like when i first met her mm-hmm. what point did that start to happen because that's I mean, I'm about to become a mom for the first time, so I can't I can't say firsthand on this. I will speak more with more authority about raising children <laughs> once I have one. <laughs> so I do try to be careful and respectful about that. I speak on things that I have very firsthand experience with, and I'm not a mom. Oh, I am a mom. But very but, soon, yeah. Very so, soon. yeah, so, um, but I can't imagine having a child that, like, was – so in tune with me and in sync with me and that made eye contact and listened to me and then started to just feel like they were being pulled oh, away and, and yeah. drowned, which is the story I hear a lot. Um, so when did that start to happen? Um, I would say, yeah, you know, it's hard to say exactly when because it's kind of a gradual it's, process, right. but, you know, it, I would say somewhere around that two two year mark is when that started yeah. to go away. You know, at first it was more of like a a distractibility, you know, where she would still kind of have the eye contact, but it was like inappropriate, you know, I'd ask her a question, she'd kind of look away and just, you know, things were just kind of crumbling in that whole communication yeah. part of thing. Yeah. Um, and obviously because yeah. it's not this black and white, like this, you know, this, all these things happen on this day. It's this slow and gradual was, pro- right. process, which is why it's easy for people to deny that it's vaccines or make a direct connection. Mm-hmm. But what we're going to get into is that we have a way of testing and what, and what we find and now seeing the pattern over and over and over as a doctor and you as her mom, and then hearing, you know, a thousand stories like this, we know that there's a connection. Right. And I don't think that uh, just to be clear, I don't think that vaccines are the only, um, I think they play a big role, but I think there are other factors. Right. That, they're not the only toxins. That, yeah. They're not right. the only toxins. It's the multitude of other toxins that we're exposed to just this right. world we live in, you know, there's so much toxic stuff. But I also believe there's genetic predispositions mm-hmm. and especially like the MTHFR gene mutation and other ones where the person who has these genetic predispositions to not being able to uh, methylate folate, for example, in the mm-hmm. liver, which is what the MTHFR gene mutation causes, um, the body can't produce glutathione. So in other words, the liver does not work as it should. So where one person's body can take toxins and remove them through the digestive system more effectively and efficiently, the person who has some of these um, genetic anomalies, they can't detox properly. So these toxins build up, and the result is way more severe. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that anybody, even the body with the most perfect functioning liver and no genetic mutations, can handle 60-something vaccines by five years old or whatever the vaccine schedule is and is going toward because right. there's so many others um in the in the works and about constantly to be put out there out. constantly right. coming out i mean it's ludicrous and we're we're vaccinating for things that aren't even deadly that are just inconvenient i mean we mm-hmm. don't need vaccines for chicken pox and and hepatitis and newborns and gardasil in newborn babies i mean this stuff it's this is just insanity and out of control anyway mm-hmm. let's get back on the <laughs> story because i'll get on i'll get um a little bit sidetracked here <laughs> So um, was there anything else with Serena's history that you wanted to share or that you can think of? Um, that kind of seems like it sums it up for the most part. For right now. Okay. I'm sure it'll come to me. <laughs> yeah. Interrupt me if you if something okay. comes up. But so any so so then we met. So you bring her in. She's four years old. I get to test her. Our appointments, you know, for a child are 30 minutes. We cover a lot in mm-hmm. 30 minutes. Um, and I used muscle testing. We, well, I prayed, we prayed together mm-hmm. and, and just talk, talk through her history. I think it's really important as a doctor um, that you don't just dive into testing, that you listen to the parent or the patient first. You take a history and you, so that you process, you have this background information. And then we have to have an effective way of testing people to get results. Mm-hmm. So I use muscle testing, which tons of people are skeptical about. So I'm going to just have 
uh, Julie tell you guys what her thoughts were and what it was like because I'm sure you were skeptical. I'm right. sure this was different than anything you'd experienced before and way different than Western medicine. And there's plenty of seeds that are planted by the majority that think this stuff is uh, wacko, <laughs> however you want to describe it. But that's just, the honest truth is that's what I use. Prayer and muscle testing and then just discernment. Um, and, I feel, and I believe that God gives certain people gifts to be able to really just see what's going on and properly diagnose. But when we tested her, what we found was, and this is what I'm seeing a pattern of, and this is why we're starting to make these te- do these testimonies, is I'm seeing a consistent pattern over and over and over again from patient to patient that displays these kind of uh, behaviors that fall on the spectrum, mm-hmm. anywhere from being full-blown autism to anywhere on the spectrum, and uh, be, they're calling it just spectrum disorder, I guess, mm-hmm. now. Um, but... The combination of aluminum, mercury, and formaldehyde. Mm -hmm. These things are getting trapped in the system. They're completely poisoning the neurological system, the nervous system, crashing the immune system. The body absolutely cannot handle this overload of neurotoxins and other toxins. That's why she was getting sick all the time. Totally. Which is so we're so we're claiming that these vaccines are preventative and we're claiming that they strengthen the immune system. But the evidence does not show it, mm-hmm. at least not in um, all of the population. Right. So mandating these things is the, is the issue, or doing this many vaccines all at once, or the combination vaccines is a huge issue. Right. Or especially with somebody who has a compromised system already, you absolutely don't want to be injecting anything or putting right. anything by, or GMO foods for that matter. Um, so that was the interesting thing coming into a doctor's office, you know, usually focusing on um, more of like the the negative things that are going on and kind yes. of giving this um, non-helpful projection of what treatment's going to look like and just setting up more and more appointments. So it was very Hopeless. different coming into here um, and talking about potential healing through something simple as changing the foods that she ate. You know, that's mm-hmm. something that we can empower ourselves to do, you know, I would just have to focus more on, you know, a non-processed food diet, you know, we were recommended to go on the paleo gluten-free diet by you, and we can talk about that more later, but um, it was just really neat to kind of have a different perspective, walking in, having hope, having answers that were really at my fingertips, you know, things that I could do that That were non-medical based, you know, it was in my own kitchen that we could try to heal her um, along with some of the natural supplements we put her on that were very effective. Yeah, but um, you know, honestly, it was it took a lot for me to actually first come and make the appointment. I think yeah. I, I saw the video on YouTube that my friend had shown me about yeah. your practice, yeah. and I think it took me literally maybe like three or four months mm-hmm. to actually call, and then once I called <laughs> to actually come in because you know I do come from such a different way of thinking, sure. and the the truth was I got to a point where nothing was really working yeah. with her, and when you're dealing with something like mental health or spectrum disorder, it's so debilitating on the family. Yeah. Um, like I needed to fix it. You know, I need to find a way to make it better. Yeah. So that's ultimately what led me here. And um the muscle testing was very hard to swallow. You know, it just <laughs> kind of freaked me out. I didn't really know if it really worked or not. Sure. And I mean I can still honestly say that I don't know if it fully worked. But what <laughs> I do know that works is that she's being healed. Yeah. She's getting results. So I mean, I can, working. <laughs> right, and I can identify with that fear, that questioning of the methods that are used, you know, sometimes in an office like this. But yeah, you know, it's it's my own daughter, it's my family's lives that is being changed right before my eyes, yeah. and that's something I can't deny. Yeah, and I guess that's part of why I'm here, and I feel compelled to share this story with you because yeah. there's something moving, there's something happening in this office that people need to know about that you're not going to find in some published article. Or research or internet research, right? Because right. you know it's something that's not easily accepted, and I think it's definitely, you know, it's coming to light. You know, it's getting out there, but yeah. still, it's it's hard to swallow. Yeah. You know, at times because and that's okay. <laughs> because it's almost it's almost too simple, and you have this you have this testing that you can do in just a couple minutes, get answers, and then have a custom plan. It just seems too simple, right? Right? Because for something. And this is what I, you know, hear. And and honestly, when you're the practitioner doing it, like it takes faith. And so 
all I can do is share with people like, I, I believe that there is hope for you. I believe that you can be healed. And, you know, all through the word of God, it talks about like that, you know, mm -hmm. our, our belief plays a huge role and we're called to walk by faith and not by sight. Um, and I believe that God has given us good, given people gifts to use that may not make sense, that seem foolish to the world and seem too simple, but that actually work. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, you know, I, I have been to I have been to myself to practitioners who utilize muscle testing and not seeing great results. Um, so that I you know there's a power here that's bigger than us as well. Um, but anyway, I just it can be it can be simple. We can get answers, and then you have tools that you can use, like you said, without you don't need a prescription, you don't need me holding your hand, you don't need me controlling you or controlling how much of it you can have or can't have. It's just food, and it's just herbs and probiotics we'll, right. we'll share what exactly we'll share with you guys exactly what serena's plan was if you're okay with it yeah sure. um uh, and that does not mean just a disclaimer that does not mean that that is the protocol for autism that everybody should take the the key to this is is that each patient is individually tested to see what it is that's either hiding in their body or what organs are weak or over functioning and then what do we do about it and i literally use hundreds of different products um to get people, not not on each person, <laughs> Thank God. Right. but you know, from, I choose from like all I have, I have all these different um, products, herbs, essential oils, um, supplements, different things that we use. Um, but each person only needs a few of those, and then we get down to the exact product and the exact dosage, and then the exact diet for Serena, which her plan will look different from another child with autism. You know, or if you were to come in as a patient, your plan would look very different from somebody else with the same symptoms. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to make that clear because people always want to just watch a video and take the protocol and apply it to themselves and that may or may not work right. for you or your child. So just to be clear. So um, just to recap our, so our treatment plan. So within three weeks, your first reevaluation was three weeks after your first appointment. Mm -hmm. um, and in my notes, here's exactly what I have written down. Um, there was major change immediately. Um, and that the, um, Five days into their plan, Serena had, a, there was a pizza party at school, mm -hmm. and so she had, she partook in the pizza party. <laughs> a gluten she party. Was a gluten party, <laughs> a gluten and dairy party, and right. processed food party, and who knows what else was in that. Um, and she had a two-day major setback. She had already started having awesome results right. that so quickly, within days. Disappearing of the intense tantrums, able to follow some simple directions, which we weren't getting anywhere with before. Yes. So, um yeah, after that pizza party, that afternoon, actually, so when we started, you know, going on her plan with yeah. you, she was starting to take her naps again, because prior to In that, a matter of days. In a matter of days. All yeah. of a sudden, she was able to take her afternoon nap and um, getting more sleep at night, sleeping in a little bit, and yeah. then after that setback with the pizza, her nap dropped again. She yeah. was just behaving terribly and just difficult to manage. It's like a direct correlation with the food that was being given to her sure. and you know I was really upset at the school but at the same time you know this was like a big change for her and um, you know we had just put it in her file you know yeah. gluten-free processed food free and you know I'll be honest that is one of the difficult things about you know treating a young child with yeah. this sort of plan is because you really have to get everybody else on board you know yeah. unless you're homeschooling and you know sheltering your child from the world yeah um, you know they will be exposed to other foods and things that are sure. sort of out of your control so anyway it's just the beginning of this whole advocacy journey you know yeah. with your child and as a family to really um, explain and talk to the right people to kind of protect the the plan for your child yeah. because and help them understand like like this isn't just like we're extreme or were, you know, like you're not, nobody would do this because they just felt like it or wanted to. Oh, like I'm so anti-diet. <laughs> right. you know, I'm the person that loves to get in and out and, you know, chips and all of that. So um, it's, it's, huge. it's a big change. But, I mean, we're seeing that it's actually having a medicinal effect on our daughters. So, you yeah. know, we, we had to be on board. We had it's no life choice. changing. Yeah. Right. And so one of the good things, you know, so this happens to almost every patient of any age. They, you know, they're, they're getting results and they're progressing. They're on the right diet. And then a holiday comes or a birthday comes or they're, or they just get burnout or a pizza party at school and, mm -hmm. you know, they splurge, whatever, have a cheat meal. Um, and then for some people, it's not as big of a deal. They don't have such a huge setback. But the, I guess the good news is if we can always make everything a positive is when you have that, 
you get to see the black and white difference. It's not Dr. Jana's making me. It's not I have to. It's I need you to. saw it for yourself. Mm-hmm. I need to. Like this food is not really food for me. It's not fueling Serena's body. It's making her severely ill and it's affecting her mind, her gut, her immune system, everything. And you got mm-hmm. to see that for yourself. Yes, and that it, was a very humbling experience because then I had to kick <laughs> my own butt to make some changes in the kitchen, which yeah. You know, it didn't come overnight. I would say that the whole adjustment period probably took a couple months to slowly um, weed out all that unhealthy food and then also just getting in that habit of making the right things and getting the kids on board because they're so, like, really addicted to all the processed stuff and all the sugar. Sure. Um, I had to explain, you know, hey, this is not real food. This isn't good for you. And making those changes, surprisingly, I think came faster to my kids than maybe an adult because they're still young and moldable and simple things, I think, kind of actually do make sense to them. And they feel, at the end of the day, they feel better. Yeah. You know, they're happier. They're able to focus. They're more rested. They're getting the nutrition that they need. So. And they don't have a lifetime of garbage and addictions and habits like we do. So it's, you know, they're, they change easier. I mean, it is true. I mean, definitely you see like the younger you start making the healthy changes, which is great. If we can learn this stuff young and we can start making these changes, we raise our kids healthier. Then they're not like us trying to change in our thirties, forties, fifties when it's like (laughs) trying to break (laughs) lifetime habits is hard. Right. It's just hard. Um, So, okay, so let's see. Um, And the other thing that I wrote down that you've talked significantly about um, is that you also noticed for in Serena's case, and this isn't this isn't always true for every patient. Sometimes it doesn't make that big of a difference. But you noticed that taking her herbs and supplements, the few things that she had to take um, at the same time each day, had a significant impact on her. And then when you were inconsistent with that, you noticed behavioral changes. Yes. So the, the methyl combo pill um, that helps her to kind of break down, you know, the different toxins and yep. kind of work her system to um, the optimal level that it should, that seemed to be a real significant one for her because sometimes, you know, we would skip it or because you have to, for a kid, they can't swallow pills. So the right. little capsule you mix with like applesauce. I think yeah, what suggested. was your trick? I love sharing these so little tricks and tips with people too. What I did, I told her it was like, um, you know, like a power what was it, like a vitamin power pill, you know, and she was like, oh, I get to take my vitamin power, Yeah. and I'd sprinkle it in some applesauce or put it into, like, a smoothie, so Uh she wouldn't notice it, Um, so that seemed to kind of help, and we made, like, a ritual out of it, like, okay, it's smoothie power time, you know, make it, like, a fun thing, but sometimes it's just one extra step that you don't want to do, or I don't feel like making a green smoothie, it's just one thing you don't have time for, and when I would skip it, um, I felt like some of the tantrums would kind of come back. She's a little bit more irritable. There just seemed to be some kind of connection. And that quickly, my husband um, would get on my case, you know, like, you got lazy on it, you know, to, <laughs> which is so funny because, you know, I know we haven't talked about that, but I think a lot of struggle for, you know, moms or whoever is stepping into the office with their child is, you know, getting on board with your spouse or your partner because, yeah. Um, you know, I'm the one playing telephone to my husband explaining why I'm here and what I'm doing. Yes. You know, I'm spending his hard earned money, you know, for her treatment. And, yes. um, if it's one of those things, you just have to come uh-huh. and witness this place for yourself because, yes. you know, for, for me seeing this, even just through online, it, it's hard to really understand. You just have to be here you and can. feel it. Yeah. And, um, you know, quickly he made a turnaround and, I feel like he's totally on board, you know, we're on the same page, but it does take some time to streamline that with your loved ones yeah. who are kind of, you know, in this with you. Yeah. It's not easy. I mean, but your story, like you guys, not everybody gets like results by day one or two, you know, like you right. guys saw a significant change really fast and I'm so grateful. Like that was God's grace. And I think because your husband couldn't come with you on the first visit, this is why I always encourage, you know, families to come together. I always encourage spouses to come with um, come along because you'll never be able to regurgitate all that we talk about in 30 right. minutes or if it's an adult appointment an hour or more so um, it's just important for everybody to know what's going on and why and to and I, I just feel like to come in and meet us and see that we're not like these wackadoodle <laughs> you know, like it, it's logical information you know like but poisons and things that aren't food they actually make us sick and 
when we stop eating them or remove them from the body, the body can heal and do what it, it was created to do. Um, but since you got such fast results, I mean, your husband couldn't deny it. Right. So you guys <laughs> were able to join forces quickly, which not right. everybody um, has um, that kind of favor, you know, right yes. off the bat. So, so I know that really played a role in, in Serena's success as well. Um, but one of the things I wanted to, um, so by on visit, so your first follow-up, so visit number two, um, we still show, show traces of aluminum and formaldehyde, but already all the mercury. So in three weeks, in doing everything mostly right, not mm-hmm. perfect, all the mercury was gone and the virus was under control. I think I forgot to share that. Um, she, Serena also tested positive for a virus. So we don't know whether that was one of the um, viruses from the vaccines that were injected into her body or if it's just because she had a compromised immune system and she was susceptible to all kinds of colds and flus and things like that and was always getting sick if she was just exposed to something in the environment was fighting a virus currently. So Mm -hmm. that's another thing we can test through muscle testing in just a second. So anyway, the virus was under control, so we knew her immune system was responding, the mercury was gone, and we were still working on pulling out aluminum and formaldehyde. And what one thing I also see, just to kind of add to this story, is aluminum actually, there's a lot of talk about mercury, and definitely more uh, aluminum, because, you know, people are starting to learn more about aluminum, but aluminum, I'm actually finding, is the harder one to pull out. So it actually mm-hmm. takes longer, and sometimes you have to pull in an herb like horsetail to get the aluminum out. The methyl combo isn't always enough to get both heavy metals, but in Serena's case, um, it was. Mm-hmm. So um, anyway, so then by visit three, which was four weeks later, so we did three weeks, we did a three-week um, gap between her new patient exam and her first follow-up, and then we went a full month to her um, next follow-up, and by so the second follow-up, all traces of aluminum, mercury, and formaldehyde were out of her system. So yes. seven weeks, less than two months, we made that much mm-hmm. progress, and um, I wrote what you said. She was doing well. Um, she had run out of probiotics for two weeks, and she was off the diet maybe 10% of the time. So in other words, you were doing, by seven weeks, you were doing everything about 90% right. Mm-hmm. And... Um, but you definitely saw correlations and setbacks um, when she was off the diet or off the supplements or skipping supplements when you were inconsistent with it. So overall, better, but you could definitely see that that sounds accurate. Yeah. Okay. Um, And then we just, I just saw you on December 1st, which is when we decided to do this interview. And I thought, I've got to share your story. I got to share Serena's story. Like people need to hear this. People need hope. Um, So only three and a half months into the whole process, and once again, there was still no trace of anything. And you notice, like, I mean, all these people have this virus that's going around. It's been a really sick year for mm-hmm. this the respiratory cold that's going around. And you said you could see that she had just a trace of it, but she really hasn't gotten sick at all. Her immune system. She's been very healthy yeah. since we've been coming here. It's, I mean, we've been doing all the same things. She's, you know, been in school. We've been going to the playgrounds, you know, touching all the carts at Costco. Yeah. <laughs> all the normal without stuff. Without fear, without right. hand sanitizer. No, I don't okay. use hand sanitizer. Oh, great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank and you. she's been really healthy. I mean, just recently she got over a little uh, cold bug, but she kicked it in like 12 hours. Yeah. So it's amazing. I think the food change. And yeah. It has to be an inside out change. You can't just, we can't try to sanitize the skin and use hand sanitizers and inject these things into our body thinking it's preventative because the the risks just don't outweigh the benefits. You can't say mm-hmm. this boosts the immune system, yet it's this toxic overload. And here's the black and white evidence. You know, right. I don't care what people, I don't care, I mean, biased people want to put out research. And of course, if you're the manufacturer and you're the one making $30 billion a year right. on vaccines, you're going to conduct research that supports that. I'm not going to get paid anything. And I have nothing to, I'm going to face a lot of persecution for um, advocating for this stuff, um, but this is these are real people, and this is what it's what we're, what people that go into healthcare, true healthcare. This is what we should be about: is seeing lives changed and doing and improved. Right thing. Yeah, <laughs> improved. Yeah, changed yeah. In, a, in a positive, in a positive way. way. Yeah. So getting her language back and all that. So share with us what where she's at now, because I can. Here's what I can say as Serena's doctor: like when she comes in, she loves to play with the face paper on the table, and in the beginning, like. She wouldn't really communicate and um, just real obsessive about like pulling the face paper off and making her scarf about it, but wouldn't make eye contact with me. And we really had to kind of chase her around the room to do the muscle testing and stuff. Mm-hmm. She wouldn't sit still. And on this last visit, 
She sat still. She held my hands, just prayed with me, looked me straight in the eye, mm -hmm. was so calm and sweet. And <laughs> she plays with the foam rollers and the tennis balls like all the kids do. And then she picked it up when she was told and put everything away. And there's just so much more. Child. There's so much more connection. I mean, yeah. it, it's going to be hard not to get emotional. But <laughs> you let it rip. Um, <laughs> it's like, you know, getting your daughter back getting your child back. Totally. And um, I always knew that something, you know, when things started unraveling when she was around too, that something was a little off with her. And, you know, I was in a really dark place with my husband. You know, it puts a lot of strain on your marriage, sure. um, feeling like you have this blessing, but it doesn't feel like a blessing. It feels like a burden. Yeah. You know, we had so much fight for our situation and yeah. so much anger that she definitely didn't deserve you know she's just an angel that was brought to us but yeah unfortunately you know when you have something like a like it's a mental health issue um it poisons so much in your life yeah and just to be able to have her respond to us and yeah. to enjoy things together with this more shared experience this shared attention span um yeah. it seems so basic and simple and it's something we take for granted if you don't have a child that's experiencing these things, but when yeah. you do, it's debilitating. And I just, I feel so grateful that we're on this path to really getting to know her and really supporting her to be who God intended her to be. Yeah. You know, she, she's not meant to be trapped no. mentally in this place that's a world of her own where she can't communicate or, right. you know, receive information from anyone. I mean, it, it literally, we came from a place where we felt like we were, almost like disciplining like a zoo animal, you know, yeah. having no yeah. tools to really, you know, shape her, control her, lead her to this place where I'm starting to feel like her mom. Yeah. And it's incredible. It's such a blessing. And um, it's not just the positive report from what you see as her doctor, but we've been going to private therapists that yeah. see her once a week um, for occupational therapy yeah. and speech therapy, because we initially also noticed that she had some playground issues, you know, intense fear of heights, you know, wouldn't yeah. go down slides, just uh, so insecure. Like overly with her, paranoid. Kind of, of paranoid and just not really in her body. So yeah. we were led down to the path of, you know, seeking out those therapists, which we do still see today. And yeah. they will tell me how much she's improved yeah. without me even telling them that we've been coming here, right. that we've, you know, I've eventually shared with them because they'll ask me what's going on with her. You know, she's... Yeah responding she's making the eye contact she's yeah. laughing at funny things and being funny and just yeah. interacting and um I feel like coming here has just given us so much hope yeah you know to yeah. hopefully go in a positive direction to really um, be able to experience that love that was meant to be experienced by having a child not yeah. this feeling of being, you know, stuck in a big rabbit hole where you don't have hope, you don't have any options. Like, because this is this is your lot for the rest of your right, life. Right, that you and have to go to therapy for 30 years. That's right. just, you know, my personality is I want to attack it head on. I want to know all the different ways to do it, not just the traditional Western ways. Um, I want to yeah. do it all, you know, yeah. so we that's what we've been doing. We still go to the therapist once yeah. a week um, to kind of get that social um, environmental piece because just from healing her on the inside out, you know, she's kind of lost out on two years of socializing and kind yeah. of being able to learn that because neurologically she's been blocked. Yeah. So we're just now she's still starting. She's still considered to be slightly delayed. In language and speech. Yes. So when we got our final evaluation from the psychologist, you know, initially you said you may not even need that appointment because we might be able to treat her, right? So that. Yeah. She wouldn't even be diagnosed as autistic. Yeah. I did not believe you. <laughs> not surprised. You know, and I said, Nobody okay, does in the beginning. this is a whack doctor. <laughs> like, how can she be so confident to make a claim like that? You know, you go into a normal doctor's office. They There's just way never, too much hope here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, you would yeah. never get that kind of hope from a traditional doctor. Nope. And my pediatrician has never given us that hope. Yeah. Um, but I said, okay, you know, just to play it safe, I'm going to keep that appointment. And this was, you know, initially when we first met. And we just had that appointment, yeah. and she did not get a diagnosis. Yeah. She is not on the spectrum, no autism. So those are the results from the psychologist as and well that, as the school district. And that was just recently, right? That, that was, was just the, recently. The, uh, end of November? That was about three weeks ago. Three, yeah. Yeah. So three months. Three months, and yeah. there's all this hope, and it's so 
it's so simple. And I'm not, I like, I'm not doing this to like, uh, say that I like anything about myself. I want people to just know that there is hope and this is not rocket science. I'm not an autism specialist. I have no additional training in autism spectrum disorder or anything like that, but just, um, faithfully seek the Lord and am willing to operate in a gifting and really understand the human body and look for patterns across the board with people. And you, when you do this, it's, it's just not rocket science. You know, people are always like, show me the evidence. Show me. This is the evidence. This is the evidence. We have people. a healed daughter on our hands. Yeah. It's amazing. And this is yeah. not, you're not one, you're not one in a million. You're one of many who have testimonies of healing. I don't mean that you're not unique or that sort of is not unique, but this is just, I, I wish people could, um, I wish they would surround themselves more with people like this. Like the, the only way we can get the word out is through little interviews like this. You know, we don't have news and media on our side to, to share these stories, but mm -hmm. I, I trust that God's going to get the word out to help us do something about it. So it's like, obviously we want to be preventative and I want to be able to educate moms and parents before like they have babies even before they get pregnant because there's so much that it, that's that's for another interview and blog and podcast and things like that but mm -hmm. even when we don't know you're the perfect example of being able to give people hope of all this damage took place and all this stuff that was hopeless and um and then we were still able god still provides a way out right he still mm -hmm. provides hope he's there's, it's not too late. There's so much that you can do. And I have no doubt in my mind. So another, um, over the top claim by <laughs> me that I will make, I have no doubt at all. And I think that you probably are more confident in it now that she will not just catch up, but surpass what everybody has ever said in language and all that. I mean, kids are fast Absolutely. learners. She's going to catch up socially. She's going to catch up like every, all the things that we're inhibiting are now gone. Mm -hmm. all the blocks so the the sky's the limit she's and literally just taking it in and learning and it, totally. by september she'll be most likely placed in a mainstream kindergarten class which yeah. is the ultimate goal yeah absolutely so absolutely it's amazing it is amazing it's amazing yeah. to me too because it it keeps my faith alive and um just shows me to just keep you know keep pressing on and keep keeping it simple like it, it mm -hmm. doesn't have to be it just doesn't have to be so complicated and um there's hope, you know? So yeah. is there anything, is there anything else that you would want to share? Like in, now this is your testimony. It's not just a testimony that you watched on my podcast channel or website, but it's your story. So I don't know. Is there anything else or any other tips that helped you guys succeed or overcome fears? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Just anything else that would help people know? I think just the thing that has worked for me is just, um, you know, praying about it and also just really hitting that fear head on. You know, yeah. if, you know, if you're scared that it might not work or you can't make that first step, I say, just go for it because yeah. you really don't have anything to lose. I mean, right. you might Nothing as well, can hurt you. no, you might as well come in and do the, the, the muscle testing <laughs> and all this stuff and you're, it's going to be proven to you, you yeah. know, and if it doesn't work, then maybe it's not the right treatment plan, but there's so many, there's so much hope in it that yeah. it would be a shame to discount it from the get go and not sure. even try. Because I really feel like from coming here, we've shaved off so many years of therapy and, mm -hmm. you know, really what could have been wasted time and just yeah. kind of attacked it head on. And yeah. ultimately, it's a blessing to our family because I feel like we're just healthier as a result. Of All of you. Eating right? better. Right. Yeah. You know, eating better and understanding more the the true nature of food to the body and to the gut and the mind yeah. um i think it's just a, an, an awakening that yeah. why would you not want to know about it yeah you know so. and that so much of what um you know unfortunately in america like our what we're called what we call food and what we call health care is um it's a lie and you do have to be discerning and you do have to read labels and you do have to think for yourself you can't just um we've we've made healthcare in this country like doctors are god and we're supposed to just be like advocates for you and help you like educators um and it's just wrong like to i i feel like as a doctor to abuse that authority and to make you feel stupid because you're just nothing but a mom like you don't know what you're talking about you moms know their children better than anybody moms mm -hmm. and dads you know like I, I can never know Serena like you know her 
I can know different things about how the body works and, and advise you and encourage you. And not everybody's going to take uh, the advice that I give them, but sometimes they, you know, a, a patient or a, a parent will bring up something and I can always just go, I'm not sure, but let's test it. Let's test your body and see. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you bring in pieces of information that helps me and we work together to write a plan that, that works because we're working together because our goal is not for Dr. Jana to just be right all the time. It's for Serena to get Serena <laughs> to get well. Right. It, it's for her. It's for in her family. best interest, and it doesn't matter who's right or wrong. It's for her to be well and right. um, to bring truth. And sometimes that means I have to speak hard truth to people. Sometimes that means I have to really encourage you and help you overcome your fears. Um, but regardless, pretty simple. <laughs> Food is medicine, and um, oh, we were going to share exactly what her. I just what I want to share is what her treatment plan actually looked like to give people like a real life idea of what she was at, what I you were asked to do. So her diet was basically gluten free, sugar free. So we cut out anything that breaks down into a sugar. So we cut out gra- grains and um, did we even do fruits? I can't remember. She can eat all she fruits. Did, she did all fruits, and yeah. She can still eat dairy. Yeah, so, so she actually got there. Yeah. No cheese, it's no fish crackers, you know. Yeah. Oh, we <laughs> no cut out processed. Right. Yeah. Just all the junk. Cereals and garbage. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so it wasn't even that uh, extreme. Like, we didn't even no. have to go on a full, because in her case, she didn't have candida overgrowth, which a lot of patients do. Um, so, so sugar free, she could still have all fruits. But we cut out like processed sugars and things that contained high fructose corn syrup and, and excessive sugars, not mm-hmm. not things that grew out of the ground. And then we cut out all gluten grains. Mm-hmm. But she was still able to have rice and quinoa and mm-hmm. things like that. So actually not that – it's still hard. I'm not discounting it. But mm-hmm. some people have to be even more strict sometimes. And then as far as her supplements are concerned, we had one capsule of something called methyl combo, which was the methylated folate and the methylated B12. That pulled the heavy metals out. Um, in the beginning, we did Oregon grape for as That's a right. liquid herb. I forgot about that, but we didn't need that for but a month or something. Mm-hmm. Um, that was because of the aluminum. We did have to pull something extra, and I forgot about that. And then she was off of it within one to two months. Um, we did a children's um, a probiotic that I carry, a chewable, at one a day. And then um, the omega-3, we didn't even have that in the very beginning, did we? No, that we'll was, start out later. Yeah, so mm-hmm. the omega, the kids' omega-3 and the kids' calcium plus B3 are more her maintenance care stuff now. Mm-hmm. So it was three things, probiotics, an herb, a quarter teaspoon a day, mm-hmm. and one capsule. So one chewy, one capsule, and a quarter teaspoon of a liquid herb that, yes, doesn't taste good, but it works. Mm-hmm. And it, overall, it's about a month, and then it was over. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So pretty simple. <laughs> um, and uh, you remind me, did you ever get her tested for MTHFR? We have an appointment um, in the beginning of January okay. to do full-on genetic testing. So that's yeah, kind of the next which I do step. recommend. We will do that to kind of also decide for our younger two boys what mm-hmm. we're going to do with the whole vaccine thing. Yeah. Um, you know, we're not – for our daughter, we definitely don't want to go forward with more vaccines. Sure. But I, I want to see if that's the case with our boys. Yeah. Um, most likely it will be. Yeah. And after experiencing this, I don't want to – risk going down that path sure but just for my own knowledge i'd like to know yeah the gen- so, genetic component yeah so in yeah. and just a uh, word of wisdom if uh, and especially because serena is the oldest you know you want to be very very cautious about vaccines moving forward with the rest of the kids mm-hmm. um but yeah so there's they um it's statistically about 95 percent of all kids who could be diagnosed anywhere on the spectrum um have the at least one copy of one of the MTHFR gene mutations. So we're gonna she's gonna do the full genetic uh, testing. There's lots of different ways to do it. You can do it through your medical doctor. I actually have a blog on my website that uh, teaches all about what this what this is and how it affects us and why. I actually have one copy of the gene as well, which explains a lot of my history that nobody could figure out either, which I didn't know until I got pregnant because I finally did the gene testing. So I'm like I want to. I, I really think I have this, and and I did, and it was the exact allele that I thought it was, mm. and um, so it wasn't a total surprise to me, but it was actually a piece of information that's not really helpful, which is going to help you know influence how my healthcare, uh, I don't know, protocols and how we move forward with baby mm-hmm. mercy. Yeah, so it's good to know, and then you have the evidence, and it makes a lot more sense why 
your family would be more reactive to these toxins than a person who has none of that going on in their genetic history. So anyway, all right. Well, thank you so much. Thank Thanks you. for sharing. I am sure it's going to impact people. Um, I hope so. <laughs> for many years to come, you have a story. I, you know, my calling, everything I do today is because of the testimony that I have and all the trials that I went through and the sickness and um, all that God did to heal me, which was a huge journey in of itself, which took way longer than what I see now in patients because I had to learn the hard way and learn what not to do and really chew on the meat and spit out the bones, which became overall my calling and gifting. So who knows what God's going to do with you guys, but it's exciting, it's good, and um, all glory to him. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. Thank you.